I don't want to introduce you and botch it. Um, <laughs> so I'll let you introduce you. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Scott Shapiro. I'm a client partner at Facebook. I also lead our industry relations for real estate. Uh, I am proud to say the first person I met in real estate was Nick Baldwin. Uh, second person was Tristan Amuda. Uh, back at Inman, I want to say Nick was this 2016. The years have completely melded together. I can't, I can't even remember anymore. But um, Nick was giving a Facebook talk. And uh, it was the first time we'd gone to Inman. And so we were being real stealthy because we didn't know anything about the industry. And all of a sudden I come in and there's this awesome guy doing a presentation and started a, uh, a really great friendship and uh, a partnership. So when he reached out to have uh, a conversation about some things we're seeing on the platform through the pandemic and some stats, uh, it's always easy to say yes to, uh, to Nick and to uh, the folks at Keller Williams. So happy to be here, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you taking 30 minutes out of your day. I know you're super busy. So let's not waste any time and let's jump into the sure. presentation. You should be able to share your screen. Yeah, let me do this really quick. Let me just open up this big bad presentation and then we get to see, we get to laugh at the Facebook guy to see if he knows how to share a presentation. The, uh, the, tech, the tech is always uh, interesting. So there we go, share. Well, in your guys... defense, Scott, in your defense, Zoom is really hard to use. No, it, it, it's, it's a couple of clicks. It's more... Um, Inevitably, my laptop is like, you know, the Millennium Falcon, you know, the hyperdrive is never working on it correctly. And there's no one to go, you know, hey, in a pandemic, you don't call anybody to come to your house to do this. So we just roll with what we got. Um, all right. Can everybody see uh, my screen? I'm, I'm hoping the answer is yes, because that means I've Nick, just give me a thumbs up because I can see you. You're on mute. So I just thumbs up. Okay, cool. All right. Um, yeah, so you can, see, can I ask you a quick question, Scott? Course, was this one of those cool. is this one of those super uh stealthy private um presentations that had to go through facebook higher-ups no um oh. it's not so i <laughs> it's not, yes. you know, no, I, I it's not um all right let me zoom back this is actually a great introduction so in addition to doing real estate i'm working on some task force internally at facebook and a lot of what i'm going to cover for you guys yes there's real estate involved absolutely some great stats but um, one of the things we've been trying to understand through the course of the pandemic is what are we seeing on the platform from the consumer perspective? What are the changes at a macro level and how does it affect a brand? So think about automotive brands, think about real estate brands, think about insurance brands that have national or international uh, you know, structures, right? Brands and how they sell product, but then they also have franchisees and they have local um, bricks and mortar and or sellers or destinations, right? So, you know, Wendy's has corporate, but they also have regional and they also have the local store here in Austin. So a lot of the work uh, that I'm doing here is to understand the behavior of consumers through the pandemic. And I think the way I would take this for everybody on the, on the VC here is, you know, I really want to arm you with what's happening on the platform. Happy to do Q&A. Nick, I can go a couple of minutes beyond the bottom of the hour too if we're, if we're running long. So, um, I'm going to power through this, but I wanted to give you guys framework of like where this came from. So Nick, actually, we got most of this approved finally. Uh, it's not super stealthy, uh, crazy. The, the only time in the history of our relationship it hasn't been that way. So um, cool. Let's dive in. Um, a couple of things. One, people are now holding power. We know this. And reaching a local audience is more important than it's ever been. You can see all these wonderful builds that not only do we reach you know, big cities, we reach medium cities, and then we really reach local communities. Um, a top line statistic, because I don't know where all of you are, you know, dialing in from, is just to think about the fact that Facebook has about a roughly plus or minus 5%, 70% penetration in any local DMA. So if you're in Champaign, Illinois, 70% of the market is on Facebook above the age of 18. Um, and, you know, I think it's just important to know that all things with Facebook are local when we boil it down. It's really about your community. It's really about how your community is using the platform. So these are really great macro stats. Awesome, right? But what I would say here is that number of 167 million Americans using Facebook every day, it equates to adding the audience at the Super Bowl, the Oscars, the Tonys, the Grammys, whatever, all together. But that is that 70-ish percent of adults 18 plus in the United States. And that's how I think you can look at like, hey, if I'm advertising on 
capacity to reach about 70% of my local community there on, on platform. Um, wanted to give you guys some stats just on what we're seeing from a real estate perspective. Top of mind, and I'm sure Nick has talked about this, is just, you know, staying present on the platform is important from a paid and an organic perspective because more than 50% of buyers only talk with one agent before they decide who to work with. So a lot of what we have been trying to work amongst, you know, Keller Williams agents with command and how to use these tools correctly is, you know, the more that you're putting your brand <clears throat> in front of the community, the more that they're going to understand who you are, what your value prop is. It's awesome to talk about the listing. The listing can be the hero. But I would also say that there's a lot you can offer from a paid perspective about your expertise. Talk really local. I think that's a big piece to this is that's what consumers are looking for. And then just at the macro level, this is also what we're seeing is people use mobile to search for homes and rentals. So one of the interesting stats we've seen through the pandemic was when everybody came home and everybody had to work from home, you would have thought potentially that the upward tick, that hockey stick growth of the use of mobile would flatten out or stop. That wasn't the case. We actually went from an average of three hours per day being used on mobile to four hours per day during the pandemic. And what they're doing in real estate is they're searching, you know, so 79% of homeowners, home buyers rather, they're, they're using an online resource to search for a home at some point in their, in their journey. So again, <clears throat> where our platforms fit in is dominant time spent on mobile, two of the largest platforms you can have with Facebook and Instagram. And that's where people are spending their time. So if the equation is really, I need to find eyeballs, I want to find new consumers, that's where the marriage of using commands tools, which I know Nick has talked about a lot with you guys, how to use that tool really to grow your business. And then you put that together with the time spent on our platform, that makes that real connection point to the consumer. And by the way, I would say too, that what we're finding is it's not just your next generation of um, consumer, it's people like my dad, who's 75, who was a former team lead at Keller Williams. He's all over Facebook and Instagram, right? So it's not just I think there's a misnomer that only young people use our platforms. That's not the case. We actually see that actually, um, you know, we have very high usage with baby boomers and also silent generation. Hey, Scott, um, I just have a question and a comment. Can you back yeah. up a minute? Yeah, of course. First thing is, this is the comment um, where it says once, they, once buyers make a decision, they move fast. Mm -hmm. I can totally, I mean, just per, like, obviously I've worked with a lot of buyers in my career. Um, but I can also say for myself, that's totally true. Whereas when we bought our lake house three months ago, I was the only, first and only house I saw and bought it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and we weren't planning to really do it so quickly. And then today we're, my wife and I are thinking about selling our current house and buying another house. And mm -hmm. I was like, let me just go get pre-approved. And I did. And so it's right. like, yeah, you move fast when you say, oh, I'm going to wait. And then the perfect thing pops up and it makes you get mm -hmm. off your butt and do it. Why do you think 74% of renters are using a desktop? Like, you know, you know I, I, I don't know. You know, I think some of it is, I really think that people love the home search aspect and the aspirational aspect. And I think that when they're out and about and when they're at Starbucks or when they're at the grocery store or when they're in the car wash, whatever, I think they're consistently inquiring. And I think when they're in that mode, they're using more mobile than desktop. I think it's much more a immersive experience and a life-changing experience. So you are constantly in the mode of looking for a home. And if you're consistently on the go, you're going to use more mobile. Whereas my take is on a rental, it's needed. It's, it's, you have to do it if you need to rent a home or an apartment, multifamily uh, unit, but it's not as immersive, Nick. I mean, it's, it's really not. I mean, if you think about it, the home buying experience is the most important, the largest transaction in your life. And it's just yeah. immersive. And I think people are go like, I've just seen it. I've seen it in our own behavior. When uh, my wife and I were looking and we were moving to Austin, you know, we, it didn't matter if I was on the bus, if I was on a plane, if I was like in Starbucks, I was using mobile. I also think um, another reason is, you know, Zillow, Realtor, all these firms, they've done a really amazing job of building great mobile experiences. And I think that's the other piece to this is have they made it easy for the consumer to function and do that kind of research and search 
within a mobile device. And I think they they built a business, as have we, based on mobile. I don't know if I can speak for that as much on the rental side um, as it is on the on the ZG, Realtor.com, Redfin, Keller, you know, all those sites that have really been mobile enabled. Cool. Cool. All right. I'll move us ahead here. Let me click the handy dandy now. Ah, there we go. Don't double click. Yes. Okay. So I already hit on this. Four hours are spent on mobile by US consumers each day. I, I think the way I would think about it is don't think about social. Don't think about your shares, your likes, your comments, your social status. Think about, okay, Instagram and Facebook are mobile first platforms. That's where consumers spend time. That's why they're important. That is the real core of our value prop. The other thing I think that's really interesting for you guys to think about is one in three media minutes will be spent on mobile. So if you unpack it, what we're finding from a platform perspective is more and more video, long form videos being consumed on Facebook and Instagram, Netflix, Peacock, Paramount Plus, all of these Amazon Prime, right? We're spending more time actually consuming media on our mobile phones in addition to work than just work. It went from being, you know, your smartphone, the initial BlackBerry was a work device. This is now a lifestyle device. Um, I was out with a friend last night and we had on my mobile phone, literally YouTube TV streaming because we had the Yankees Red Sox game going uh, as we were having a couple of beers, you know, and because the bar we went to sucked and they didn't have the, the game on, but um, that's another story. But I think it's important to know that like media is being consumed and why that matters to you again is you want to be where your consumers are spending their time. Second big piece of information we found is eight and 10 people surveyed in, in a, a Facebook IQ, which is our research group commissioned study, they interact with local businesses on mobile. And we get this a lot. And I'm sure Nick, when you teach classes, you've heard this thousands of times is why do I need a Facebook page? Well, here's an interesting stat. Three and four Facebook users in the United States visit a Facebook business page for a local business at least once a week. So Facebook's not thought of as a search engine the way that a Google or a Bing is, but millions of searches are happening on our platforms every day to find businesses and content. And the page, which obviously you need to advertise, is a big component of that, but the business page, right? They're not looking for Nick, who's my friend. They're looking for Nick Baldwin, realtor, Scott Shapiro, realtor, you know, team lead, realtor, that kind of thing. So um, it's just Scott, another important point. Yeah, go for it. Leslie and, I, Leslie and I just did a class yesterday. We teach a class called Command is a New Hustle. It's like a 90-minute class. And one of the stats we use is, you know, three and four, Facebook users visit local business pages. And the reason why that's important is not because of the organic reach, because you're not going to get any, right. but they will, if you, after you talk to someone and set an appointment, they're going to go look you up. That's right. And if your Facebook business page is like a barren wasteland, no one's they're going to be like, wow. And because yeah. millennials are such, so into social media, they're going to think, oh, this person just isn't serious about their business. They take that really seriously. So like, you want to yeah. keep it fresh yeah. simply so when people look you up, they see that you're actually posting stuff. Yeah. And I think it's another great way you're right about the organic reach, but to the point of your paid can lead to organic kind of touch points is, you know, that's where the video about your expertise, that's where the video about your neighborhood expertise, right? You know, what's happening on Main Street where you're selling real estate. That is, and I think we have stats in here overwhelmingly what people are looking for out of the pandemic is that common local touch. Um, time and again, we're seeing it. I mean, here, I'll, I'll walk you guys through some things here. Um, it's a good segue, which is, you know, 42% of, on, of online communities, they're connected by location. So an interest, a group, something like this group, something like obviously Lab Coat, which Nick, you know, runs, you know, that's bonded by interest. But what we're seeing is an uptick in a bonding of local community and local location. So again, there's no one who knows more about the local community than a top agent who is really immersed and gets it and understands and is active in the community. So I think, again, people are looking for that common touch. And then the other thing that's so interesting is, as we've talked about iBuyers and all these disruptive models coming into real estate, while this stat is not real estate specific, it does speak to the 64% of US consumers during the pandemic want to buy from a local business. So again, it's another opportunity to kind of think about not only how are you projecting your listings in a paid environment, but how are you using the command tool 
and the various points of communication you want to tell the consumer about your expertise. Um, it's so important, I think, and in, in the research is bearing this out, that everyone is thirsting for much more community, much more connection locally. And again, I would just state, and I say this a lot, is you know, your local car dealer doesn't know the community the way a local real estate agent really does. So use that to your advantage. Um, we talked about the increase in mobile engagement. Just know, obviously, real estate is not the same as some of the stay-at-home orders, but we saw an increase in that kind of behavior. So again, um, mobile is not going away. It's not drying up. It is still growing. And so again, just think about, I got to reach consumers. I'm going to have to do it through mobile. I've got to be a mobile first um, marketer and how I you know, express myself and my services and my expertise. Um, people are changing how they browse and how they buy. Um, we've seen an increase. And again, I think we already touched on this with real estate, right? The high level of research that goes in online. But now what's happening is other industries are catching up to that. You know, high net worth consideration purchases like an automobile or a piece of real estate, you're going to do a lot more online research. But what's happening is everyone now, everyone is looking at a lot more research before they make that buy. 27% um, more pre-store research. So again, just know that you know, we led that with real estate. Real estate leads that kind of behavior, but it's becoming widespread beyond just, I'm buying a house and I need to do re research. Research is becoming the new norm. Um, and then I'll leave you guys with one for the fun Friday night. You know, you get together with friends and uh, you can talk about BOPIS, which I didn't know until I was actually on the task force building this narrative, which is buy online, pick up in store. So if you want to really wow some friends, just talk some BOPIS with them on a Friday night. Uh, you know, when you talk about, you know, going to Barnes and Noble or uh, Total Wine or wherever, but that is a, a huge increase again in the buying online use of mobile tools to make purchases. So. Um, I think you guys know this with real estate. It's why Keller has invested so much in command, but it's just, I think, a good reinforcement point that not only is this behavior happening in our industry, but the rest of these other industries are slowly catching up to some of that stuff that, in particular, retail that wasn't happening before the pandemic. Love this stat. I want to try to walk through the word salad here. So, you know, what we looked at was brands for real estate. Who would they, who would people would follow? Take all the other, the most popular uh, platforms. TikTok, just transparently, was not part of this at the time when we did the study, but it was YouTube, Pinterest, Twitter, Snapchat, LinkedIn, and Reddit. And what we found is you are more likely to buy from a brand you know and or follow on Facebook or Instagram more than all of those platforms combined. When you boil it down, and I think Nick does an excellent job through his educational series with you guys, is Facebook is a platform for shopping. It's built for that. Instagram's built for that. And so the behavior we're asking consumers to take is really, really easy because we do make tools that make it easier for brands and consumers to, to meet in the middle. So I think it's a really important point to know, again, is somebody probably going to buy a home right away off a mobile ad? No, you're going to have to you know, connect, do a little bit of conversation, but they are. Facebook and Instagram are platforms that are used by consumers to shop. It's not a disassociated behavior set. And again, on the real estate side, it really is the dominant platform that people look to to actually find property and to buy property. Um, so, and then just uh, this ties more into, and, and Nick knows a lot of these, these are myths. So back when we were traveling, You'd go to conference after conference. I'd meet with agents and teams, and you know they'd ask a lot of different questions. And these were kind of like the big myths. And I think when we talk about command and the build of the technology of command, this like ties more to the command side than the Facebook side. These were things in our collaborative work together with Keller Williams that we wanted to solve. So one, a myth we had been hearing is there's no way of knowing if my Facebook ads are working. With a tool like command, that's not the case. Reporting is easy. It's easy to discern. I spent X, X amount of people saw my ad, X amount of leads were driven, X amount of clicks were driven. So while our native platforms on the Facebook side, if you used ads manager, might be a little confusing, it's certainly not the case with some of the builds we've had uh, with Keller Williams. It's pretty easy to pull PDF reports and know exactly what you got for your money. Nick touched on this earlier. The other myth we heard a lot when we were traveling was 
status updates and organic posts are as effective as paid ads. It's not. Uh, roughly 3% typically of a page follower. So 3%, you know, if you have 10 people who follow your page, three, per, three of them are going to see your organic posting at the very best. Um, and it's important still to post organically and to have an organic presence with your page, like Nick said. But the only way to break through and reach me if I don't know you is through paid advertising. It's not going to be through an organic post. So again, I think just clearing up some of that myth is really important to understand that it's important and you should have that presence, but if you wanna get new consumers, it's no different than any other advertising channel, you have to pay to reach them. Um, and then lastly, you know, we heard a lot of this and um, <laughs> I was thinking of Travis today, uh, Nick, with burning the money. Travis's uh, post last year, remember he was sitting in the smoking jacket He's, he was like boosting his, uh, yeah, and he was throwing money into the fireplace. So boosting a post is not the same as an ad. It's a lightweight interface, but it's not going to get you the robust algorithmic engine that traditional advertising on our platform can drive. Where we know the confusion lies is our native tools can be really confusing if you don't understand how to use them. And so by working with a Keller Williams to say, look, Facebook isn't going to necessarily build a real estate only native tool, but we're an open platform. So what are all the things we need to, what are to put in or take out to not have from an ads perspective? And how can we get you in and out in five minutes to do an effective ad with all the cool stuff that would take hours to do and to hope that you get right in our native tools? And that's really where the intersection of command meets the, the rubber meets the road. It's ease of functionality. It's also a ton of data coming from Keller Williams that makes a much, much, much more powerful model. You know, if we've got, I mean, I'm making this up, but if we have 100,000 agents using command, that's 100,000 different data points that are going to feed our, en our mutual engine. Keller Williams is Facebook to make a more optimized algorithm for you from an advertising perspective versus just me and Nick. And there are people and I think Nick is one of them who really understands our native tools extremely well, but that is few and far between because they can be complex and because there is a lot of choice and because it can get a little bit like, dear Lord, what am I doing? So again, with command, I wouldn't take the ease of functionality to mean it's a simple tool. It's we've just hidden all the complexity behind a wall where you don't have to deal with it and where it doesn't confuse you. And frankly, where you shouldn't have to spend 30, 40 minutes making social ads. You got more on your plate than you need, than time you have on. Also, your Scott, yeah. um, by the end of the year, we're going to, it's going to be even easier because they're going to have, we don't have the ability to save audiences and to save mm -hmm. ads. And now we're going to have that probably by the end of the year, we'll be able to see like, based on what ad we're creating and what, what it target interests were, choosing we'll be able to see how many people we could potentially reach right now we really can't see that once all of those things are combined yeah. so yeah. the cool thing about it's going to get a lot quicker you save your audiences you don't have to always select the same target yeah. interest yeah. over and over and over so it's going to be a lot simpler yeah and i think again you know i think of smartphones electric cars i mean you know nobody bitches when you get a, a new iphone pardon my language and you turn it on and you know, just got delivered 13 just got delivered just oh, now. You, you bastard I, mine's coming tomorrow i i finally decided not to use max you know yeah, I, I, i'm going smaller just because i i had a uh samsung the the ultra note you know big like seven inches of phone when i'm trying to like throw it That's in my pocket crazy. it's crazy so anyway you um, and then you can text each other on your on your 13 pro I'm not going to text you on my Pro Max because <laughs> that's going to be a little bit beneath me, Scott. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Moving on. Uh, these guys are going to hear us nerd out on tech. I think the important thing is what Nick said, basically, is don't mistake the, a simple interface for not being a robust tool. That's, that's simply not the case. Uh, you, you don't have to struggle with it to feel like you're achieving something good for your business. Um, I think an important point is earlier this year as well, we went through about a two-year process auditing ad tech providers. Um, back when we were traveling, heck, even today, I get all sorts of LinkedIn requests of I'm company A, B, and C. 
do any of these folks know how to do Facebook and Instagram right? If they're charging you for their ad tech services, are they putting best practices in place? Are they putting the right things in place? Are they using the right tool set? Are they following or even knowing how to do this? And you know, the great majority who fly our logos and say they know us don't know us. And so, you know, command is part of what we call our top providers initiative. Um, there are other third-party providers that are on the list that do good te ad tech. You know, not here to denigrate anybody. I think what we wanted to do in that exercise is hundreds of companies say they know our platform really well. The reality is maybe eight to 10 know our platform really well. Command being built in collaboration with Facebook and our teams and our work together is part of that. So I think the way I'd look at it is it's the blue check. It's the verified part of our world, which is, you know, yes, we validate and verify that command is part of this initiative. They built a best in class solution. They built the right solution. You should have faith and feel comfort in using the tool. Um, cool. So I'm going to blast through this because I know we're coming up on time. A couple things. Video is super important. Sure. I know Nick teaches this. I know there's a lot of coursework uh, through KW and just here's what I would leave you with. Video is rapidly becoming even more important to the way our platform is used. We're seeing record use of video. And I'm talking not just in feed, not just stories, but long form content is becoming more and more important. It's the sports highlight. It's the tasty made video. It's, you know, it's originals that we put out as a platform. So video and your ability to actually pr produce good video will give you a big leg up because the vast majority of agents really do struggle with how to do video on platforms. So just think of the of, of how important it is. Two tips. One, shoot vertical. Use the whole screen. I mean, we were just laughing about my ridiculous 6.9 inch megaphone, which is just in again, use the space. We look at things vertically, stories are vertical, reels are vertical. So think vertical and shoot. And when you shoot, or if you have video, or you have a video photographer, or you have a video service you use, or whomever and however, keep it short. The biggest mistake people make is they think they need to tell the entire story in a long video. Tease what you want them to say or see on your website, or your Facebook page, or whatever destination you want. You know, it's the trailer before the movie. You know, we don't give away the ending with a three minute video. I had somebody once show me a drone video and it was beautiful, but it's like, dude, I'm not gonna watch it for three minutes. Sure, like tease it and get them to a destination at your website, your Facebook page, wherever you want that interaction, but keep it short, keep it vertical. Um, think about the different places you want that video to be used across not only our platforms, but other platforms. And again, vertical is the way to go. Um, by the way, there's another thing, which is 86% of prospective home buyers they would use mobile video to learn more about a specific home or community they're considering. So again, there's that piece. And also what we know is that when you couple static plus video, we get a higher conversion rate. Just simply put, consumers can learn more, see more. And that goes back into some of the stuff we worked on last year with Keller with Facebook Live using that tool as well. I'm going to move us forward here. Community. This is the big one where it's not ads driven. I'm going to have Nick kind of go, but you know, this is, this is not a command thing. This is just a, how do you use our platform? I would say, again, groups are growing. I mean, we've seen the power of this group. We see the power of Nick, obviously with lab code, all these groups really do attract a lot of folks into them. What I would say locally is, you know, not only be part of your real estate group, but branch out things such as, you know, downtown association, your church, your synagogue, your schools, you know, whatever the case may be, it's a great place to connect locally. When we were hit with the snowstorm back in February, my wife and I were on a neighborhood site here in Austin for just our immediate neighborhood. And it was a lifesaver. And it again was that bonding of community. It's a great way organically to connect with people, to understand what people are talking about and to really tailor some of your replies, not only in the group, but potentially perspective in your ads on, you know, hey, if you're hearing a lot of questions about your community about when's this opening in downtown, when is that opening? No one knows the community better than you guys when you're active and you're successful. So again, groups is a phenomenal way, not just to do real estate only, but I think to integrate yourself into the community and, and really you know, break apart. Um, 
We talked about the mobile storefront to Nick's point, make sure the page, you don't have to be the New York Times real estate section, but you guys have more than, <laughs> you guys have more than enough to say. I met more than enough of you. You guys, you guys have good content, get creative, bring it. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if a local community is having a parade or the Friday night band concert or the art installation on Main Street or the taste of, you know, Austin Northwest, whatever. Film it, put it in your page, make that your mobile storefront, show more than just listings. And it doesn't cost you anything to have great content where people can go and to Nick's point go, wow, I feel like I know Nick, he's, a, he's, a, he's an expert in his community. That's free, that's easy, that's how you build presence. And that's how you marry the great work on command with again, to his point, driving them to your page and then all of a sudden there's great content for somebody to see. Um, really quick, I'm gonna blast through this because we're going on in time. Stories, stories is integrated into command. Stories is hugely important. Stories goes not just Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, Spotify, ESPN, YouTube. Everybody has adopted some form of stories. It is a ubiquitous consumer behavior. 62% of people that we pulled on Facebook actually become more interested in a brand or product when they see it in stories. Here's another Friday night moment. You know, I was on a, you know, a learning panel with this dude from Facebook. Here you go, guys. Stat of the day, 1 billion with a B stories are shared across the world, across Facebook's apps each and every day. So, um, you know, it, it is a format. Again, if the goal is we need to get new consumers and we want to hit them, use stories as a great place to get in front of them because that's where the eyeballs are. The other right. thing that's really cool, this last thing, 56% of a brand of a brand sales lift can be attributed to this. So um, keep it short, keep it simple. Look at some of this stuff. This stuff, actually, this deck lives on our Facebook for Business website. Go look at it. Take inspiration from this. You know, you can, again, this shows you how to shoot vertically, you know, a wealth of resources. But again, this stuff's important. Um, and lastly, if you want, it's free to put your listing up on Marketplace. You can also use Marketplace as an advertising listing. So that's another really great place to find consumers. It's a little outside the scope of command. Marketplace, I think, is an ad unit within command that they, oh, they offer. Scott, yeah, right. Doesn't your ad show up in Marketplace sometimes? I don't it know does. if it does through I don't know if it does through command, but that we, would be a great place. Yeah, it, it's definitely an advertising unit. I want to say that it should. I mean, we've we've talked a lot with the product teams at, at Keller about making sure all ad placements are automatically um used and eligible for all of your ads. So I think the answer is yes, Nick, um, that the ads should be eligible. Now, whether they show up there or not is another thing, because again, if you're a power user on Instagram and you're not in Marketplace, we shouldn't show you an ad in Marketplace because it's a wasted impression. So some of it is where consumers, where the particular consumer that you're trying to target is spending their time. Um, so that's it. You know, we landed the plane. I, I got us in two minutes over Two minutes late. Sorry, folks. The FAA is going to oh, tell me I'm late. But um, you, know. you, you, you did good there, Scott. You did I, good I there, try. Scott. I, I try. Um, it's, it's Wednesday. I try to. I try to have a good Wednesdays. <laughs> also, yeah, Gabrielle just asked a question. Can you create a, a story on command? Yes, on in, you can create an Instagram story on command. Yes, hundred mm -hmm. percent. When you choose Instagram, you just when you get to the Facebook portion of it, uh, you just choose story. Yeah, and then it can it can run across yeah both Facebook and Instagram. Um, there are I'm not nuts about it. I'll be honest. Um, Nick knows this. You know, there, there's a toggle for Facebook. There's a toggle for Instagram. Hit both for your advertising. Um, don't make a choice you think. Let machine learning find the consumer. If you click both, it doesn't cost you anymore. It just it you know if we're trying to hit a universe of ten why don't we double it for free and try to hit a universe of 20 or hundred versus 200. So all it means is just, you have the opportunity to find the consumer where they're spending their time, each individual consumer, because we're, also, we're all different. If, and if you, and if your, if your consumer is not on Instagram, then Facebook is going to take your money. And it's going to move it over to Facebook. So you're not going to have exactly. to worry about it. it. Exactly. And I think that's a big misnomer in the industry is that you have to choose. There's no choice. Just click both and let, you know, again, we talked about, if you think about it, the, the beauty of command is it's, it's, it's scale. You know, the, all the learning from Keller Williams at a mass, and then you throw that together with Facebook and Instagram. And that's when we start doing a lot of the algorithmic machine learning where you're like, I don't care where it goes. 
I want good leads and good consumers. And it doesn't matter where you find them, just find them.